I am Jeff. Thanks for checking out the channel. Today I'm going to cover an installation of Moro Matos XRGB LED headlights as a replacement to my OEM LED headlights that I have on the vehicle. If you're wondering why I want to do that, uh, you've probably heard the headlights on the vehicle. I think they're good. They're very distinctive looking and I like them. But uh, they did uh, give a little bit of a ding for the Bronco in the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's ratings, uh, saying that the headlights basically provide inadequate lighting and curves. And I'd agree that like uh, night driving and stuff, I think they're a little dimmer than I expected for LED headlights. If you get the uh, upgrade with Muramato's XRGB headlights, it's uh, pretty su substantial here. Uh, the original factory lights put out 1940 um, lumens in the high beam and the Morimato headlights put out 3610. It's an 86% increase. Uh, so that's pretty significant on the high beams. And then on the low beams, it's even more. It's 150% increase in lighting with the lights here going from 680 lumens up to 1710 lumens. So, I mean, it's pretty substantial. If you want to go ahead and spend the $1,200 to order these lights, I'll do the unboxing here in a moment. Uh, one of the things that makes it a little less expensive is they actually do offer to buy back your OEM headlights. So they'll give you right now currently $600 for your OEMs. You buy these for $1,200. So the net cost is $600 for essentially, to me, what is the equivalent of putting another set of lights on your vehicle where you're more than doubling the uh, the uh, low beams on it and nearly doubling the high beams on it. So in addition to uh, having a much brighter beam, 150% higher on the uh, low beams and 86% higher on the high beams, you do get the neat feature of being able to customize your uh, daytime running lights on it. Uh, it's nice for shows and stuff. I don't know all the rules for every state, but my understanding is you can only use either amber or white daytime running lights on a vehicle. So, But uh, it is neat that you can run any color on there essentially using an app to control them here. I'll open up the box and then just go through the install, how you put them on, and I'll put a comparison of the uh, intensity of the lights at the end of the video. Thanks for checking it out. wrapped pretty simple just to uh, light assemblies of course you're just going to plug in the cannon plug into the back of the uh, light assembly so included in the uh, packaging are two spacers it stays here depending on the configuration some vehicles may require the headlights to be aimed at a higher angle than others. If the adjuster on the back of the headlight is not able to achieve a high enough aim, please add these spacers to the lower headlight mount. And I'll give you a diagram where these go over the lower headlight mount. Looks like they change the angle here and then move it out about a, probably about a quarter of an inch or so there. So for starters, we're eventually gonna have to pull off this lower trim piece here underneath the headlights and get at it. So one of the ways to access that is to at least loosen up and not remove the uh, forward uh, flare here. Next, we're gonna remove the nine push pins that are holding in the radiator cover. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine.
with the cover removed, we're next gonna remove the four 10 millimeter bolts inside here. Make sure they're the ones to the close edge of the grill. So not these down the line, not that, this, not that, this, not that, and so on down. So the four closest ones to the inside here. Next, if you have a uh, front camera, this uh, brown cannon plug is that we want to disconnect. Just use a little bit of pressure with the screwdriver on the front, and the camera connection comes off very easily. And disconnect the uh, washer nozzle. You can see there's a uh, the female side receiver here. It's wider than it is. If you just use like some pliers and squeeze it on its long, oblong side and squeeze it together. It'll give you enough pressure to go ahead and unplug and pull out the uh, supply, the male fitting on it. So not too hard to do, but you could do it with your fingers. Probably I find it a little tight to do and just a little pressure with a pair of pliers or something. It's a little easier to pull it out. Then we just pull on the grill to remove it. And then the last part of the removal is going to be to take off the shrimp piece here. And you can see this because the bottom screw for the headlight is actually hidden behind the trim. Then we'll remove the headlight assembly by taking out one 10 millimeter here, another 10 millimeter that's just out of view of uh, the camera here. And then of course, why would you want to make them all 10? And then there's an eight millimeter screw down here on the bottom. Uh, those three, and we'll be able to pop off the uh, headlight. It's pretty hard to get, uh, I don't have much cable slack here to push it on the pin. This uh, just doesn't have much room to get at it. So it's a little hard to pull that out, but uh, just pushing it on the back of, uh, just kind of a pin release on the back of the uh, can of plug. I'll just film on here a little bit so the next one scrape up the lens. Plug in the hand plug. Side light mounts flush against the body. Screw holes all line up.
And before I put in the pin, I'm gonna just make sure, I've got a marker on my garage wall here, just make sure the lights generally look aligned and I don't have to put that adapter piece in it before I put on the trim. And then do the other headlight. From turning on and doing a test of the lights uh, against my wall here, they actually look, and, and I'm pretty close to the garage wall here in front of the uh, headlight here, but it looked like actually the beam was hitting several inches lower, so I may want to go ahead and put in that adapter. Just so I'm not having to do all the adjustment through the actual uh, headlight adjustment. But it just seems to be hitting my wall back here about that about that much lower and that's on a spot of just a matter of feet it's where the center of my beam was hitting between the blue tape and you can see now it's hitting about right here and it's not very much of a distance for it to be off like that so i want to see if that adapter piece that's going to tilt out the bottom of the headlight like a quarter of an inch will probably make up for that adjustment difference so this is a screw that the little adjustment piece goes onto. So it's pretty easy to tweak this. So back up this screw. Put this little spacer on behind it. And that pretty much put the headlight beam back in between the tape where it was originally. So just a nice thing to check out for gross alignment before you uh, bolt everything in permanently. This is just a quick comparison between the two lights uh, while I have one of each installed. So that's the new Morimoto light. And that's the factory. I definitely like the crispness of the halo and surround.
This is OEM low beam headlights. OEM high beam headlights. Low beam. High beam. OEM. This is the uh, more model lights. That's low beam. High beam. Low beam. High beam.